Yes, guys, they were socks and they were slides. And I'm a socks and slides guy. I can't help it. I'm just going to keep doing it because my feet get cold and they're really, really comfy. So, welcome back to the channel. Big one today. Another vlog. This sun is absolutely doing my head in. Um, maybe if I sit here, that'd be better. Um, so we're going to have a pretty big day. I've got to, I've got to do a lot of listing because my sales are down. Um, sales are down about 10% on my eBay store. So I'm going to be diving into a bit of that today and hopefully getting a few sales come in. I'm going to grab the sales from overnight because fortunately we did have one or two come through that I do want to show you. And uh, we're doing a bit of a Q&A day today as well. So I've had a lot of questions come in off my Instagram post last night and um, just throughout the day as we go along, I'll, uh, I'll answer a few of those for you as well. So hopefully that makes for an entertaining vlog today. Uh, but let's get into it. Just had my breakfast, feeling pretty good. I'm going to go list some items. All right, so I've looked out my listings for today. I've got a couple of t-shirts, Patagonia, a couple of colorways from Trip to the Thrift on Thursday, and I've got that Derek Rose jersey as well. Um, so they'll be getting listed up today. And then I've also got 14 DVDs there as well that I'm gonna be listing as I keep continuing through my big DVD purchase that I made off Facebook Marketplace. But before I jump into the listings, I do wanna take you through the sales that came in overnight. And these are all the DVDs that are comping out at $10 or more on eBay, I've had two sales come through. The first one here, Absolute Power with Clint Eastwood, sold for $14.50. It is a pre-owned, as you can see there, so $4.50 worth of tracked post. It's ended up selling for 10 bucks. Awesome result. Next one is the Twilight Saga. This is the complete collection. It is brand new and sealed, and it did sell on a best offer for $20. So, guys, two DVDs out of that bunch. I've paid $0.68 cents a piece, and these two have sold for $34.50. Love it. My boy Scooby coming through with a quick sale as well. This one sold uh, Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School, uh, brand new and sealed. I bought it in a thrift store for a dollar. It sold for $17.95. I'll easily make a quick $10 profit on this one. Whenever you're buying DVDs, guys, always get the brand new and sealed because you're generally going to double your money as opposed to pre-owned. So Scooby-Doo, real popular. Happy to get it done. And a couple of shoes have sold overnight as well. Uh, the first one should just be at the front here. Come around to here, there it is there, the total 90s, guys. Look at this, this is ridiculous. So, total 90s. They've sold overseas for $150 plus $30, $35 actually, to get it uh, sent overseas. So these are going off to America, off to the USA. Um, so really cool result there, guys. You would have seen them in a trip to the thrift only about two weeks ago, I think I paid roughly $15. Can't exactly remember. But yeah, to be able to sell them for 180 bucks. Oh my goodness. And then the last one of the day was a pair of those, the Puma ribbons. So these have sold for $45. And I think I bought them for about $5. So I mean, in the end, I'm probably going to make about 25 bucks on these. They were US size 11, pair of women's shoes. I don't sell a lot of Puma. But when I do, I'm pretty happy. So to get them done for $45, they aren't in too bad a condition. Still plenty of wear left on those soles there. Um, but yeah, pretty stoked with that one. So we're not breaking any records for the most sales in a single day on eBay, that's for sure. But I'm still pretty happy with the results here, guys. You've got about $50 worth of DVDs coming through. I'm putting a lot of time and effort into the DVDs, so it's good to see them coming through. And shoes, they're my most favorite item to sell. To get them done for $185 off to the USA, fantastic. And another pair of pretty stock standard shoes in the casual women's for $45. Bucks. So you're looking at about $270 worth of value there. I've made myself about $180 worth of profit when you take out all your fees and post. All right, as I touched on, there's going to be a few questions and answers uh, throughout this video today, and uh, I'll dive into them and start answering a couple of them, and then we'll keep moving on with this uh, with this day. The first one that I've got here that I wanted to quickly answer was from Promise over in the USA. Promise says, what's your photo setup, lights, etc." Well, that's everything that you can see behind me just here. So I've got the mannequin, I've got the big box lights that are incredibly important, and then I've just got like a trestle table and a, just a plain white wall. Um, those three things, along with a really good camera, and I just use my iPhone, um, that's actually all you need for a really good photo setup. Probably the biggest thing for me with my photo setup uh, that I would say to, to be sort of really getting right is your lighting. So these box lights have just been the best purchase that I think I've ever made for my reselling business. A lot of people will say the Dymo label is the best thing. For me, no doubt about it, spending 150 bucks on those box lights have absolutely changed the game when it comes to my photo production. And I'm also 
able to start listing at nighttime as well. So it's really giving me a 24 hour access to uh, listings. And that's a really big thing because it's such an important part of the business. So uh, box lights, I bought those on catch.com.au. Um, you can get them on Amazon as well. But um, yeah, as much as you've got a good camera on your phone, a mannequin you don't necessarily need. You can just do flat lay if you're doing clothing. Um, obviously some white background, pretty easily accessible for most people, but it's the box lights. Get those right and you'll, uh, you'll go okay. Next question that I had is uh, from JT, JT's Funko Finds. If you could only sell one type of product, what would it be? JT, it would be shoes. I just love my shoes, um, more so for the fact that I do get a good average sale price of about $50. I'm generally profiting about $30 on a pair of shoes. I just don't get that commonly with DVDs, video games, uh, clothing, um, you know, all the other sort of stuff that I sell. I just commonly sell shoes. They do come through regularly for me and they are a higher average sale price on average as well. So for those reasons, and the fact that I'm just purely interested in shoes more than I am any other sort of item, uh, I would 100% go with shoes. And you never know, I might actually streamline my business further by maybe even cutting out books and, and really starting to place more of a focus on shoes moving forward. Um, we'll see how we go with that one. Uh, so there's two really quick answers. I've got a heap more to get through today and I will be getting through those, but I do need to get into my listing. I need to start using my box lights and, uh, and get these listings up. So I'm gonna do that now and we'll keep charging on. I don't know where this weather has come from. All of a sudden, it's absolutely starting to pour down, but it's not going to stop us getting on with this day. We've still got plenty to go and get done. I'm just going to go for a quick thrift, uh, a couple of local op shops, just to see what I can find. Only playing with the high profit items, talking 50 plus, but I've just done my listings and there was a really interesting thing last week where I did a lot of DVD listings at the beginning of the week, sort of Monday through Wednesday. And uh, I found that over those three days, all I was selling was DVDs, whether it was uh, DVDs of a couple of months ago or the DVDs that I'd literally just listed. But the only sales that I was getting was that category. And then the second half of the week, Thursday through Sunday, I started listing all of my shoes and I had an influx of, of shoe sales, again, whether it was old stock, or new stock. So I never actually really kind of clued in on that or, or thought about that process of what you list versus what actually comes through to sell. Um, but it was very strange last week to get just literally DVDs for three or four days and then shoes per what I was listing. So um, I don't know if that's part of the algorithm and, and something to pay attention to, but I thought that was a really strange one. Had another question come through from Bron uh, Manic to Mindful as well on Instagram, and she asked me about the drone um, that I bought a couple of weeks ago, and she said, when are we gonna get the footage of the drone in your videos? And uh, I'm, I'm trying to learn the drone, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm still, uh, there's a lot to learn, and I wanna get it right, and I wanna get some really cool footage, I wanna get the right settings. So I have been playing around with it, just putting it up in the air and, and just sort of testing it out. Uh, but there's a lot to learn, and it's taking a little bit of time. So. Fingers crossed over the next couple of weeks, maybe early July I'm thinking for a certain video of mine, um, we'll be able to get the drone up and get the drone into some uh, into some shots. I think it's gonna be really cool uh, and a really cool addition to obviously this YouTube channel. Another Q and A question was uh, regarding my reselling long term. Do I plan to continue doing this long term? And at this stage, absolutely, um, because I'm, I'm really enjoying it, and it also keeps me back here on the Gold Coast, which is where I want to be. Um, obviously, it's my hometown. Uh, I, I want to be working here, and there's there's not a, a stack of opportunities on the Gold Coast. So initially, that's why I got into reselling because it was something I could immediately just start to do to earn money, uh, and I've been able to make it now obviously a full time income. So. Um, you know, for those reasons in, in wanting to stay here on the coast um, and enjoying the job itself as well, uh, I, I do think for the indefinite future, I'll, I'll continue to do reselling. But um, something I've really grown passionate about is, is YouTube as well. So I really wanna kind of grow on YouTube and, and do as much as I can around creating content um, because that along with the editing side uh, has been a whole lot of fun as well. So 
Yeah, sort of the two, I think. I don't think any of this will change. Um, I was in a dream job scenario prior to jumping into reselling. Um, so if I was to go back into any other form of work, it would probably be where I was because I just love that so much. Um, you know, working for elite sporting teams, uh, doing sort of sponsorship type deals, that sort of thing. That was a real interest of mine and something I thought I'd be in for the rest of my life. So um, to sort of have to step away from that with the coronavirus and sort of the way my story went, um, I haven't been disappointed about where I've landed and, uh, and I do want to sort of continue with this for another couple of years at least. So where would I go after this? Probably back to the footy. But um, for now, I'm enjoying being back home on the coast and enjoying better weather than this normally. Alright guys, I've jumped into the first op shop and I've found these uh, Yeezy 350v2 Zebras. Now, I've had a good look on the internet and I've tried to do some comparisons to see if these are actually authentic. Unfortunately, they're not. There are a few characteristics on this shoe that told me that unfortunately they weren't real. Uh, I did find this Mambo men's extra large button up shirt. Don't believe it's vintage of any kind, but I thought the pattern on it was pretty cool. For $3, you'd probably always pick this one up, but I'm looking for high profit, guys, so I left it. Found some shoes uh, in the next thrift store. These were a pair of Tony Parker Peak men's basketball shoes. Peak isn't a great brand, and these weren't comping too heavily, so $12 was gonna be too much. Uh, these are really nice, so a pair of women's uh, casual slash running shoes. Uh, they were $10 in great condition, but a US size 6, I have gone ahead and I've passed on these ones as well. Uh, had a continued look in the shoe section, and I did find these Zumba shoes. So these are the fitness shoes, uh, 6 bucks on these. They weren't too bad, as well as the Columbia shoes as well. These are some really nice hiking boots. These were a size US 9.5, a pair of men's shoes. Um, I'm denied about these ones, but in the end, guys, I did pass on these ones as well. Um, had a bit of a good look through the clothing in the next stop shop, and I found a $7 vintage Nike polo. I found this uh, Simpsons, authentic Simpsons, uh, t-shirt for $4, and then a Timberland extra large uh, hiking shirt for seven bucks. Thought that was pretty cool. And then the last one as well was this uh, really nice pattern, Tommy Hilfiger size medium. But guys, I passed. Well, maybe I'm just getting a bit too picky, but uh, I've just gone through those three op shops and I have not come away with a single thing. There were a heap of shoes in that last one. I probably could have got one or two of those pairs, but I've got so many shoes at home. and. There were, there were reasons for every single one that I didn't want to buy them, so I just walked away. And sometimes it's the best thing to do. If you're not 100% about them, cruise on. So that's exactly what I've done. Um, but there'll always be another one trip to the Thrift Thursday, no doubt about it. I'm sure we'll find some cool shoes then. Two more sales have come in this afternoon, which is really cool. The first one is uh, on the PlayStation 2 uh, Crash Twin Sanity. So there it is there. This one's gone on to sell for the full asking price, $29.50. But the buyer was in Papua New Guinea. So we've got an international sale here with this one, $30 worth of additional postage. Um, so when I do my games, when I'm looking for games out in the op shops, it's always best if you can find them with the manual. Generally, you get a few more dollars. This disc is in really good condition as well, and obviously it comes with the case. So the person that has bought this one has ended up paying $59.50, and it's probably only gonna cost me about $18 to ship. So about a $40 sale on that game. Uh, the second one as well is another one of the DVDs, Fracture, Anthony Hopkins. So this one's a good one, um, sold for $9.50, $4.50 tracked postage, it's gonna be a $5 sale, paid 68 cents for it. The update on the DVDs out of that haul from a couple of weeks ago now, it's I've sold 17 DVDs, and they've been able to go for a total cost of $148 plus postage. So if you remember, I bought them all for $350, that leaves you with now just $200 to recoup, and, and then I'm in the profit. So uh, I've got 500 purchased DVDs, 17 have sold for 150 bucks. So it's gonna be a lot of money made when that one's all said and done. Okay, uh, really productive afternoon. I've done a bunch of listings, probably about, I think it was about 20 listings this afternoon. And a lot of them, uh, while a few have gone up today, a lot of them have actually been scheduled for the weekend because I'm heading off to Byron Bay for a long weekend uh, for a mate's birthday. And, and I really want to sort of backlog a heap of items that can simply just get listed up. So now that I've done all that work today, fingers crossed uh, I can enjoy a few days off and still get a couple of sales come in. 
Uh, we'll dive in now before we finish off the episode with a couple more viewer questions. And I do have one here from Melissa Atkinson. Uh, and she says, uh, please some info around promoted listings. She's just new to eBay, hasn't made a sale yet. Wants to know a bit about promoted listings. Well, personally for me, Melissa, I always do a promoted listing on a item for 2%. Uh, so 2% is just my number. That's not 100% the best way to go about it, but I will blanket that 2% across every single one of my items. Um, ultimately, what it's doing is it's just giving you a few more impressions, a, a few more chances for people to see your listing. And when the item goes on to sell, you will pay that 2% plus the standard 12 to 13% in eBay fees. So... By doing 2%, it means that I never pay any more than about 15% in fees, regardless of whether or not, or not the item sells via promoted or via organic. And I'm happy to have that 15% payment um, made. I, I wouldn't want to do anything more than that. And that's my only reason for, for doing the 2%. But um, I definitely think there is a place for promoting your listings. I definitely think you should for every single one of them. Um, but yeah, for me, it wouldn't ever be any more than about 2%. Another question that I've got here is from uh, Chrissy at Clo uh, Cozy Clothing and Collectibles. Uh, are you Eddie McGuire's long lost brother? The answer is no, Chrissy. And the answer is no, only because I would have to call myself a Collingwood supporter. And uh, I just can't bring myself to do that. Um, I'm a Brizzy Lions fan, love my AFL, but could not be, absolutely could not be a Collingwood fan. So uh, for that reason, I am not Eddie McGuire's long lost brother. Uh, another one that I've got here is from Rose and Ward Vintage. Um, hard to find comps. How do you find them? Um, look, I don't really look too hard. If, if they're not there and ready in front of me once I do the search, then I just kind of decide whether or not I want the item and I just move on. Um, if there's no comps, then I just leave it at that and decide whether or not I just want to go ahead with it. I don't think you need to rely solely on comps, but I definitely do think in your first year of reselling, you should be paying really close attention on every single item you buy for what the comp is on eBay. But if you can't find it, you can't find it, move on. I don't think that's too much of a stress. Um, Another one here, what did your friends and family think of your move to being a reseller and a YouTuber? Yeah, that's a real interesting one. I've, to be honest, I've never actually put on my personal social media platforms the fact that I am a reseller and a YouTuber. So it's really only my really close friends and family that know about it. And that was, I guess, a slightly strange and, and tricky conversation in the very early days, especially with my family. You know, my mum and dad, I don't think they saw the potential that I saw when I initially wanted to jump into it through obviously, you know, the means of being able to make money on YouTube. That was a very foreign concept to them. Um, even even my own friends, uh, there was that sort of um, knowledge of understanding that they needed to kind of learn before they understood what I was actually doing was uh, the potential, you know, to be a full-time job. So um, for those reasons of hesitation on, on people's opinions, I've really kind of just tried not to speak about it to too far outside my, my close circle. Obviously, my friends and family are all supportive and they're, they're right behind me doing what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, it was just sort of a, a real education process and I don't want to have to keep educating too many people. So I'm kind of just letting it go by the wayside and, and just kind of keeping my head down, working really hard. And if people find out through you know friends and family, not so much myself, I'm, I'm happy to have the conversation from there with someone. So um, yeah, it, it's an interesting one for sure. And um, I'm glad I've got it out the way and I've told everybody that I want to tell. And then everyone else that finds out from then, you know, I'm happy to have the chat. So that's it, guys. I've answered a couple of questions there and uh, I've got plenty more to answer. So I'm going to be doing that in these vlogs over the next few weeks on a Tuesday. So shoot through any questions that you have in the comments below and I'm going to be absolutely happy to answer them. I'm just going to keep a collection of them all and, and jump into a few of them each and every week, just like you've seen there. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one, guys. There's been a few sales come through. I've been able to show you those. I've listed a bunch of items, which to be honest, I'm not going to sit here and continually just film me listing items because I think that's quite boring. But I've been able to have a big listing day today, which is um, obviously going to be uh, hopefully a few sales uh, as a result. So appreciate you tuning in, guys. Hopefully you got something out of it today. Shoot through your questions for the next few weeks and uh, look forward to catching you on Thursday for a trip to the thrift. Thanks, guys.